We must lower the denominational lines that divide us, that pit us one against another, that waste our resources and time fighting Protestant against Catholic, Catholic against Orthodox, Orthodox against Coptic, Coptic against Evangelical. And all the while, whilst we fight one another, duplicate our energies, waste our resources, the enemies of the church move into the space created by the progressive ideology and the failure of the progressive elites. Okay, so I want to start by reading from Haggai chapter one. It's the beginning of a new year. And I think as Christians, we need to think about the things that we're going to commit ourselves to. In Haggai chapter one, reading from verse two, it reads, thus says Yahweh of hosts, this people say the time has not come, even the time for the house of Yahweh to be rebuilt. Then the word of Yahweh came by Haggai, the prophet saying, is it time for you, you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses while this house lies desolate? Now, therefore, thus says Yahweh of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much, but harvest little. You eat, but there is not enough to be satisfied. You drink, but there is not enough to become drunk. You put on clothing, but no one is warm enough. And he who earns, earns wages to put into a purse with holes. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, Consider your ways, go up to the mountains, bring wood and rebuild the temple that I may be pleased with it and be glorified, says Yahweh. You look for much, but behold, it comes to little. When you bring it home, I blow it away. Why, declares Yahweh of hosts, because of my house, which lies desolate, while each of you runs to his own house. Therefore, because of you, the sky has withheld its dew and the earth has withheld its produce. I called for a drought on the land and the mountains on the grain, on the new wine, on the oil, on what the ground produces, on men, of cattle, on all the labor of your hands. As Christians, we believe that the church is the temple of God. It says in scripture that the Holy Spirit will be sent in the name of Jesus, sent by the Father to dwell in the people of God, in that royal priesthood, that holy nation set apart unto the Lord. And as we go into 2022, Christians must ask themselves, what are their objectives this year? What are the things that we should commit ourselves to as Christians? Because what we see is a church in disarray, a church in retreat, a church beset by division, a church lacking in holiness, a church lacking in direction, and a church lacking in leadership. The prophet Haggai received a word from the Lord that now was the time to build the temple of God. We as Christians must use our time to build the church of God. That is the people of God. We often ask ourselves as Christians, why do we not make such a great impact in the world? Why are we not having the kind of effects on the world that we desire. We talk about being different to the world around us whilst not being different in any perceivable way. We talk about wanting to make an impact in the world whilst not doing anything 
that creates the kinds of impacts that the church aspires to. And I want to lay out for us as Christians why we aren't having the kind of effects that we dream of. The first reason is that the church is not a contender. Because the church has bought into a culture of being non-confrontational, of buying into the lie of pacifism, the church has become weak, has become timid and afraid. It is a non-confrontational church that seeks to please everyone and achieves nothing because that is what it seeks to do. When you are not willing to draw lines of confrontation, to demarcate your borders, to stand up for the things that you value, you end up becoming insipid, diluted, weak, conformist, and you end up going along with the trends of society and culture. And what lies at the heart of this non-confrontational, limp-wristed church that we see in the West? What lies at the heart of it is that we do not have a masculine spirituality. The church does not know to, what to do with the energy of men. That desire to stand up for your own, that desire to compete and to confront, that desire to shoulder on responsibility. The church has no place for men in its spirituality because it is completely effeminized. I want to be clear, there is nothing wrong with an effeminate spirituality. But if the only spirituality that you have is effeminate, then obviously men will walk in the door and walk out of the door because they do not see a place for themselves. Men, by nature, are competitive. Men, by nature, like brotherhoods, bands, competitions, leagues. That's why football stadiums and sports stadiums are full of thousands of cheering men. If you, church, want to create a masculine spirituality, you have to accept that confrontation and conflict are not bad things. And you must encourage the men of the church to stand up and to defend the Christian community, to shoulder the responsibility of protecting our faith, our institutions, to look after our families. Men respond to the call of responsibility. One of the reasons why the church has no room for a masculine spirituality is because we have turned our fellowships into a series of clubs. Clubs that simply seek to have members that come, pay their tithe and participate in the odd act of evangelism, the Alpha Course, some kind of good work like a food bank and go on the social events like a breakfast prayer morning. We aren't running our communities according to the needs of the people of God. We are running our communities like social clubs. Churches that run like social clubs ultimately fail and they demonstrate the fruits of their failures in multiplicities of ways. One of which is that they try to teach theology of milk toast, the kind of rusk kind of theology that does not speak to deeper and more meaningful things, but rather speaks about non-offensive topics. So it avoids questions about how as Christians we can stand up to the Islamists we see operating across the West. When was the last time you heard a sermon on that? Or how do we stand up to the transgender ideology? 
or the homo mafia or progressive militantism as demonstrated by terrorist groups like Antifascista? Where is the organization of Christians to stand up to Islamists who are persecuting Christians, who are persecuting Christians in Nigeria? We need to speak about the real matters of the church and how to organize our communities to deal with those real issues. We need to speak and rediscover that we as Christians are a people. We're not members of an institution or members of a club. The scriptures describe us as a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart unto a Lord. And what makes us a people? We have a history, the history of the church. We have values, the values of the Christian faith, our honoring of the family as the bedrock of society, our honoring as the church, as the loci of our uh, uh, organizational identity. I'll take questions at the end. That as a community, we organize ourselves according to our ethics, which are value ethics, virtue ethics. We look as Christians not upon a childish list of right actions and wrong actions, but right attitudes and wrong attitudes. As Christians, we need to rediscover a political vision, a political vision for our own community, not for the state, not for Britain, not for Europe or Spain or America or Australia, but a political vision for the church. Just like the church had a political vision to liberate Spain from Islamist occupation from the 7th century until its liberation in the 15th. We Christians must rediscover a narrative of politics that addresses the concerns of our own people. Furthermore, as Christians, we must lower the denominational lines that divide us, that pit us one against another, that waste our resources and time fighting Protestant against Catholic, Catholic against Orthodox, Orthodox against Coptic, Coptic against Evangelical. And all the while, whilst we fight one another, duplicate our energies, waste our resources, the enemies of the church move into the space created by the progressive ideology and the failure of the progressive elites. As Christians, we must actively organize ourselves to create families. Families are the principal means that any religion grows. And we must organize our communities so as to create families. And we must structure our community to look after families. All of this, ladies and gentlemen, all of the topics that you have heard me speak about will be facilitated by a new modus operandi of how we do church. We do church through the Benedict Option. The Benedict Option is when Christians 
unite and consolidate in geographical spaces, not clubs separated out over wide geographies in which single individual Christians end up being surrounded by 20 and 30 non-Christians and not being able to make an impact on their community and their society. What we need are consolidated geographical communities in which we can influence the local economy, we can influence the local politics, we can influence the local culture, we can influence the local police force because they are recruiting from the tens of thousands of Christians that they are surrounded by. That the tens of thousands of Christians are dominating a constituency and electing as Christians their representatives who are sympathetic to, to the cause of the church. That we influence the economy so that when cafes support the LGBTQ agenda or support anti-Christian agendas or try to sell us halal meat, we can boycott those businesses and support Christian businesses. It is through this reorganization of what it is to do church and of what it is to be Christian and to expand our horizons as Christians that we will fulfill the call of Haggai where the Lord says consider your ways go up to the mountains bring wood and rebuild the temple that I may be pleased with it and be glorified, says the Lord. Every Christian must bring their skills, their abilities, their resources, their time, their energy, their money to the building up and the support of the people of God. Firstly, in your fellowship, then in your constituency, then in your city, then in your region, then in your country, and then across the world. You must build up your networks to deal with the problems according to their size. Some problems you can meet as an individual. Some problems you can meet as a group. Some problems you meet as a fellowship. Some problems you meet as a collective of fellowships, citywide, regionally, and nationally. Any questions? Any questions on the topic? So we have a triggered clown here. There's nothing we can do about it. We just have to push through it. Okay, so I'll move on to my next topic.